Hi, my name is Kelly Hood and I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Optic Cyber Solutions. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the NIST cybersecurity framework, but specifically about the update that was just released this week. So just this week, we saw that uh, version 2.0 of the core, or a draft discussion, or a discussion draft was just dropped. And that's what I'd like to walk through today to look through what, uh, what was changed, what was removed, what was added in, and where things are kind of staying the same. So let's dig in. So here, I wanted to start off with a quick side-by-side -side of 1.1 and 2.0. So here we can see the biggest change really coming into the, uh, out of the discussion draft for 2.0 is that we're moving from five functions to six functions, adding that govern function. So pulling that governance category out of the identify function previously in 1.1 and moving it on into its own function, expanding that out into four categories. Uh, we can see that's the biggest change. Also here, we can see that we're going from 23 categories to 21 and 108 subcategories to 112. So on the next few slides, we'll dig into a little more about what that means. So here I've blown them up a little bit, make them a little bit easier to read, and we can see the core side by side with 1.1 and 2.0. So like I mentioned, the first thing we'll notice is that governance function that we can pop right out here with the four categories with organizational context, risk management strategy, roles and responsibilities, and policies and procedures. Now, if you're familiar with 1.1, um, these probably aren't new concepts, and it's really just trying to pull those out of some of the other areas of the framework, largely from Identify, and highlighting those as being uh, you know, very important to the organization. So we wanted to highlight that as a place to get started, that that governance needed to be separate from just identifying and understanding what you have in your security program. Next, I wanted to highlight that there were actually 10 categories that were either realigned or removed. Now, I want to be very careful with these words that largely they were realigned. The words have been removed in the category sense, but they have been moved somewhere else for the most part. And here we can see where they have been moved to. So business environment was moved over to governance and renamed organizational context. So there are some other nuance changes in there, but largely that's where you're going to find anything that you were looking for in business environment over in organizational context. Context. Again, the governance category has been removed because it has been expanded into an entire function. So you're still going to find that information there. Identity management and access control has been rolled into a new category where it's been broadened a little bit to be identity management authentication and access control. We can see information protection processes and procedures getting kind of split out into several other areas, focusing on the process side. Maintenance was rolled into asset management. Um, and so we can see, I want to highlight here with all of the arrows that while it may look scary at first with 10 different categories being removed we're really just moving things around a little bit creating some clarity based on um, I know there was some feedback provided about um, things being better way to present the information it looks like that's what they did here moving that information around so while there were 10 removed they're mostly rearranged <laughs> Next, I wanted to highlight the nine categories that were added or renamed. And like I mentioned, um, that business environment was largely renamed to organizational context. So while it looks like it's a completely new thing that you haven't seen before, a lot of those concepts are there. Even risk management strategy, um, that one was really, it was in identify, so it was ID, RM, now it's moved up to GV, RM, and there were some nuanced changes there. So it shouldn't be too big, no big surprises there. One of the larger changes or larger two changes are the next two in Govern though, uh, roles and responsibilities and policies and procedures. These were both concepts that were taken from other areas of the framework, largely identify again, and but then um, you expanded upon. Um, there were uh, subcategories around processes and roles and many other, uh, well, many of the other functions, um, really, and then they were kind of consolidated down into this governed function to streamline that and make it a little easier to understand. Additionally, we can see improvement and identify was added, and that was largely taken from respond and recover, each having their own improvement category, moving that up to identify, but then also broadening it to show that we need to have improvements across the board, not just in respond and recovery. So now that covers the entire life cycle of the framework. 
Um, we also have a couple other areas I wanted to highlight where platform security and technology infrastructure resilience. These are two new ones that are um, some of the larger changes, I think, really moving around a lot of the areas from information protection processes and procedures, protective technologies, um, and some of those different areas where they've moved it around and expanded a little bit on um, backups and, um, and some different things. So those are where you're going to want maybe want to take a look to see what those changes are. Um, again, nothing too groundbreaking, but some, some bigger changes in those areas. And then incident management, finally, the last one there um, was taken largely from response planning. And so we can see some of that alignment there. Um, I wanted to also highlight that many areas stayed the same or are very similar to the same. And here we can see the kind of the list of things that didn't have significant updates. There are a decent amount of wording changes and little nuanced updates, um, but we can see that there are a lot of categories that are, are largely the same from asset management uh, to awareness and training. There was some consolidation there. Data security, there was some uh, clarification in that one um, around when we get down to detection, the uh, event analysis and monitoring. So there, are, there is, a, I don't want to make it sound like everything has changed and nothing, nothing is the same. Um, there are many areas that are that have been tweaked a little bit, but are largely the same, and you can see those here. So I wanted to bring it all back together here to, to wrap up this overview. We can see everything in one picture. We're on the left with the CSF 1.1, everything in yellow is being uh, proposed to be taken out. Those categories will not exist anymore, but we can see if we follow the arrows over to the right, all of the categories in black or the dark gray color are the ones that are being added where a lot of those being are being moved into. Um, but but hopefully walking through that step by step will help to kind of see where those relationships are as we move from 1.1 to 2.0. So thanks for watching this video. I hope this was helpful to get a quick overview of what are the changes to the core that we can see. Um, I wanted to provide the link here to the discussion draft itself. There's a lot of information in there. So I know I'm going to be continuing to read through it over the next few days. But please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, if you have, if there's anything specific that you'd like to uh, to learn more about. Um, also, uh, C-Forum, there's a group uh, through LinkedIn that is, um, there's some conversation around the framework updates there that I'll put a link down in the video notes. So feel free to join the conversation there as well. So thank you for watching the video. Again, my name is Kelly Hood, and I look forward to the conversation. Thanks.